These are your notes over factoring a basic trinomial day two. So we actually did a bulk of what we're going to be doing today yesterday. And hopefully what we did yesterday will make today really easy. So basic trinomial, that's a trinomial when the A value is one. So my leading coefficient right there is one. To factor a basic trinomial, we're going to find factors of A times C. So when you multiply a times C, we're going to find factors of AC that have a sum of B. B is right here. It's the number in front of the X term. So your notes might look slightly different than what you're about to see, but all of the content remains the same. So just follow along and fill in your notes. So as you recall from yesterday, I used a little graphic organizer um, right here on number one. I've got a trinomial. I do not have a number in front of my x squared, so I can put a one there. We're gonna factor, or we're gonna find factors that have a product of a times c, so one times seven is seven, and a sum of b, that's eight, and I'm gonna put that there. So when I list my factors of seven, one times seven, it's prime, so the only factors of seven are gonna be one and itself, and I'm looking for the pair that has a sum of eight. Well, that's easy. It's one and seven. So when I factor this, and that's all we did yesterday, but when I write my factors out, my factors are this. So my binomial factors will look like this, x plus one and x plus seven. So I put those factors right here. The positive 1 and the positive 7, x plus 1 times x plus 7. So let's look at number 2. I want factors of 64 that have a sum of 16. Remember, a times c, factors of 64 that have a sum of 16. So what two numbers, when I multiply together, I get 64, and when I add them together, I get 16. So yesterday, we listed our factors of 64. 1 times 64, 2 times 32, and so on and so forth. So you can pause this video and practice finding or listing out your factors of 64, then finding that pair that also is, is the sum of 16. Those two numbers are 8 and 8 because 8 times 8 is 64 and 8 plus 8 is 16. So I'm going to start going fairly quickly through this lesson because of everything that we did yesterday. So how do I write my binomial factors? Well, that's going to be x plus 8 times x plus 8. I just put those numbers right here in my binomial factor. Can I write that differently? How about this? If I have x plus 8 times x plus 8, wouldn't that be x plus 8 squared? It sure would. All right, let's go to number 3. I need two numbers that when multiplied together give me 18 and when I add them together I get 11. So you can pause this video and practice finding those factors now. Those factors are 9 and 2. 9 times 2 is 18, 9 plus 2 is 11. How do I write that as binomial factors? Well, x positive 9 so that becomes plus 9. And then I'm going to write positive 2, so that becomes plus 2. And those are by my binomial factors. So if I want to check my work, what would I do to check my work? Well, I could use FOIL. First, outside, inside, last. Multiply them, and I would get x squared plus 11x plus 18. All right, let's go on to 4, 5, and 6. I need two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 10. What are those two numbers? If you know your multiplication facts, this you're probably already really good at this. If you don't, you definitely need to list out your factors of 24, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, and so on and so forth. And what will you get? 6 and 4. 6 times 4 is 24, 6 plus 4 is 10. What are my factors? x plus 6 times x plus 4. Let's go on to number 5. I need two numbers that when multiplied together give me 24 and when I add them together I get negative 11. 
Okay, my product is 24, so I know both of my signs are the same. But because my sum is negative, I know both of the numbers, both of my factors are negative. What are my two numbers? 8 and 3. Negative 8 times negative 3 is 24. Negative 8 plus negative 3 is negative 11. So my factors are x minus 8 times x minus 3. Going on to number 6. Factors of 48 that have a sum of negative 16. What are those numbers? You can pause this video and practice finding those factors now. Those numbers are negative 12 and negative 4 because negative 12 times negative 4 is 48 and negative 12 plus negative 4 is negative 16. So my factors are, I would write negative 12, that becomes x minus 12. Then my other binomial, I would write negative 4 and that becomes x minus 4. Okay, let's go on to seven through nine. All right, on number seven, I need factors of 72 that have a sum of negative 17. What are those factors? Positive product, negative sum. Both of my signs are negative. Eight and nine. Negative eight times negative nine is 72. Negative eight plus negative nine is negative 17. So my binomial factors are x minus eight times x minus 9. Let's go on to number 8. Set up your graphic organizer. Two numbers that multiply to 1 times 40 is 40 and add to negative 13. So positive product, both of my signs are the same. What are both those signs going to be? Are they both going to be positive or are they both going to be negative? Since my sum is negative down here, I know both of those numbers are negative. What are those numbers? 8 and 5. Negative 8 times negative 5 is positive 40. Negative 8 plus negative 5 is negative 13. So how do I write those as binomial factors? I have a negative 8 and a negative 5, so I write it like this. There's my negative 8. There's my negative 5. Those are my factors, x minus 8 times x minus 5. Let's go on to number 9. I need two numbers that when multiplied together give me negative 90. Wait a second. This is my first example where I have a negative product. Let's think about that. How do I get a negative product? Well, one must be positive and one number must be negative. That's how I get a negative product. My sum is negative 1, which means when I multiply these two factors together, whatever I get right here, okay, and over here, whatever I get there, I'm actually going to be subtracting to 1, and then the bigger number takes the sign of the sum. So what are those two numbers? That when I multiply together, I get 90. When I subtract them, I get 1. That's going to be 10 and 9. Well, which one is negative and which one's positive? 10 is bigger than 9, which means 10 is going to be negative because my sum is negative. Take the sign of the larger number, so 10 and 9. Negative 10 and 9, how do I write those factors? x plus 9 times x minus 10. And if you wrote x minus 10 times x plus 9, that's completely fine. Multiplication is commutative. It doesn't matter the order in which I multiply. All right, let's go on to number 10. I need two numbers that when multiplied together give me negative 56. Tell me about the signs of those numbers. One's positive and one is negative, which means I'm actually going to be subtracting to get negative one, right? I'm really going to be subtracting those numbers because that's what I do when I'm combining terms with different signs, okay? So what are those two numbers? Eight and seven, which one's negative? If my sum is negative, then the larger number is negative. So positive 7 and negative 8. x plus 7 times x minus 8. Again, if you wrote x minus 8 times x plus 7, that's completely fine. Let's look at number 11. Two numbers, draw your x. Two numbers that when multiplied together give you negative 18. Okay, the signs are different. One's positive and one's negative but add together, or really subtract, 
to get you 7. Okay, what are those two numbers? Again, if you need to list out your factors of 18, you can do your t-chart like we did yesterday. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, and then you'll see 2 and 9 are the numbers that subtract to 7. So which one's positive and which one's negative? Since my sum down here is positive, the bigger number is going to be positive. So our factors are, and I'm actually going to erase this so that I can write my factors, x plus 9 times x minus 2. Okay, number 12, two numbers that when multiplied together give me negative 39, and when I add them together, I get 10, that I have a sum of b. Okay, so tell me about the signs of those numbers. If I have a negative product, then my signs must be different. They cannot be the same because if they were the same, then I'd have a positive product. So they're different. Take the sign of the larger number. So this sum down here is positive, which means the larger of these two factors is gonna be positive, okay? What two numbers multiply to 39 and subtract to 10? 13 and 3, which one's positive? The larger of the two, positive 13 and negative 3. So my factors are x plus 13 times x minus 3. Okay, so one of the things that we always must do when we're factoring is look for a GCF first. If you don't look for a GCF first, it's wrong. So you have to factor out a GCF. Okay, so looking at number 13, I'm gonna switch up my colors again just because I've had a lot of fun doing that this lesson. When I look for a GCF, I notice they're all even. All of the coefficients which and the constant over here, which means I can absolutely factor out a two. And when I do, what am I left with? X squared plus X minus two. I'm left with a basic trinomial on the inside of my parentheses. Hey, we know how to factor that. I need two numbers that when multiplied together give me one times negative two is negative two. When I add them together, I get one. Okay, the signs of those numbers are gonna be different because my product is negative. What are those two numbers? that? that multiply to two and really subtract to one, two and negative one, which means my factors are, you gotta write your GCF first, x plus two times x minus one. Do not forget to write your GCF. A lot of students do, and it's wrong. If you forget to write your GCF, it's wrong. Looking at number 14, just looking at the coefficients, I can tell that I can factor out a three because all of those numbers are divisible by three. So what am I left with? X squared minus five X plus four. And what do you know? We're left with a basic trinomial. I need two numbers that when multiplied together give me four, which means signs are the same or are they different? They're the same, but what are they? Are they both positive or are they both negative? Well, my sum is negative five which means they're both negative. What are those two numbers? Negative one and negative four. So how do I write that as a factor? I write my GCF first, don't forget that GCF, and then x minus one, there's that negative one, and x minus four, there's that negative four. Okay, last one, number 15. I see all of my coefficients are divisible by two, so I can factor out a two. I don't have variable GCFs in common, so I can't factor out a variable. But I'm left with x squared plus five x plus four. So again, basic trinomial on the inside of my parentheses, two numbers that multiply to four and add to five. Well, we just did that pretty much, didn't we? We multiplied to four, we added to negative five. Well, now if we're multiplying to four and we're adding to positive five instead of negative four and negative one, it's gonna be positive four and positive one, whichever order you wanna write it in, okay? These two factors, if you wrote four on the right and one on the left, it's completely fine. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna write my GCF first, and then I'm gonna write out my factors, x plus four times x plus one, and if you wrote x plus one times x plus four, that's completely fine. But this concludes your lesson over factoring a basic trinomial 
when A is 1, day 2. Happy factoring!